Hey guys, I'm Jonathan. Welcome to this new video. We will learn how to do this. Just before starting the video, I wanted to tell you that you can download the source file. The link is in the description. If you discover this channel, I currently publish 2-3 to three videos per week related to filmmaking, advertising video, and 3D. With Cinema 4D, Blender and Houdini. So, if you are interested with these subjects, don't hesitate to subscribe. I thank in advance all the people who like, comment and share my videos. You know it helped me a lot. If you want to have help, you can join the Discord server and the Facebook group. The links are in description. We don't waste any more time. If you are ready, let's go. So here, on Blender, the first thing to do is to add a cube. So here I'm going to do Shift A, Mesh and Cube. I'm going to put myself here on the X to be in front view. And I'm going to do a GZ with the control key to be able to put my cube here on the Y axis so that it's at zero on the Z axis. Then here, I'm going to go into edit mode. So I'm going to press tab and then I'm going to press the face here to do a face selection on my cube. And I'm going to select the top face and I'm going to go back to face view and I'm going to do a GZ in control and I'm going to put here on a tile. So for now, it's a little bit thick, but I'm going to leave it like that and we'll see later on how to change that. Then here I'm going to go to the top view with the little Z icon here, and I'm going to do Control R on my cube, and I'm going to add several loop cuts. So I think I'm going to add 27 here. Then I'm going to take a new loop cut. I'm going to do Control R. I'm going to put one in here. I'm going to go into edit mode again. Into points mode. So this time I'm going to select all the points here. And I'm going to do X and vertices so I can delete the points that are there. Then I'm going to take all the points right here. And I'm going to move them along the Y axis. So here I'm going to go to top view. I'm going to do GY and control. And I'm going to put them about here. So I'm going to leave two tiles thick. And here I'm going to stay in top view. I'm going to activate the transparency in the mesh. And I'm going to come and select every second point. So I'm going to do this all the way through the geometry. And here I'm going to do GY and control, and I'm going to increase them about one half tiles here. Then, once we've done that, we can go back to solid view here. We're going to go into object mode. So here you can switch from object mode to edit mode, or with the tab key. And then here, we're going to come into the modifiers, and we're going to add the surface subdivision modifier. So then, we're going to set it to 3 at this level, at the rendering and viewport level. And we can right click, shade smooth, and here in the normals we're going to set auto smooth. So here, we can see that our shape has been rounded a little too much. So we'll go back to edit mode. We'll go to edge mode at this level. And we'll select the three edges here. So with shift you select several edges. And then here, we'll select all the magnifying glasses. So you do shift and alt, and like that, it'll select the whole tower at the level of the magnifying glass. At this level. So we're going to do this on the whole geometry. So here, I hold down shift and alt and I left click to select the magnifiers. And once we get to the last one, we'll do the same thing as before. We'll select the three right at the end. And here, we'll be able to add a bevel. So we're going to do control B, and then we're going to set the bevel to 0.01. And we're going to leave, for the segments, only one. So here, we can see that we already have edges that are a little more pronounced. So this is exactly what we're trying to do. So here, we can go back to the front view here and we're going to decrease the thickness because we can see that for the moment, it's much too thick. So now I'm going to go back to object mode. I'm going to do object, set origin, origin to geometry, and then I'm going to do SC, and I'm going to put this part much flatter. Then I'm going to do GZ, and I'm going to put it at about the Y axis, but that's not really super important. Then, once we've done that, we can go back to edit mode. We'll go to edge mode, select the whole magnifying glass here with alt, and then we'll be able to do EY to keep it stuck on the Y axis. We're going to put it up to about here, whatever. We're going to add a new loop cut at this point. I'm going to move it closer to the loop cut here. I'm going to select this one with a left click and I'm going to do a GY and I'm going to move it closer to the edge of our little points here. Once we've done that, we're going to be able to merge the points. So here I'm going to put myself in top view, in transparency view, I'm going to put myself back in point mode, in edit mode. I'm also going to temporarily disable the subdivision. 
so I'm going to click here on the little icon in the editors to temporarily disable it. And then here, I'm going to select all my points except for the two on the edge. So these, and I'm going to be able to right click, merge, vertices, by distance, and here. I'm going to reduce the distance, so you can see that it's too high for the moment. So okay, it looks good putting 0.02 at the distance, at the point merge. So once we've done that, this time we can select all the points underneath. I'm going to right click, merge vertices, by distance. And here, same thing, it has merged all our points. Then we'll have to realign them. So here, I'm going to start with the front view. And you can see that there was a little shift in our points. So here, if we look at our geometry, we can see that we had a small shift in the merging of the points. So we will have to rectify this. There is a small manipulation to do. So here, we need to activate the magnet at this level. And we're going to put it in point mode. So here in vertex mode, and then we're going to select this point. We're going to do GZ. And we're going to align it with the point that is here. Then, the point, we're going to do GX. And we're going to align it with the second point at this level. And this one, we're going to do GX. And align it with that one. So then we're going to do the same thing underneath. So here I'm going to do GX. And I'm going to check to see if they're aligned. Normally, it's okay on this side. We're going to do exactly the same thing on the other side. I'm going to take this one. I'm going to do GZ. I'm going to line it up with this point. I'm going to take this point. I'm going to do GX. Align it with the second one here. And then I'm going to take this one, do GX, and align it with this one. And so here, if we look, we have a straight edge at this level, and a straight edge at this level. So we have realigned all our points. Then, here, we can realign all the points, because we can see that we have offsets. So here, we have to go to the top view. So I press C. I'm going to go to Transparency view. I'm going to go to Points mode, to Edit mode. And then, what we have to do is select, for example, the three points that are here, and do SX0, to be able to realign them. And then I'll do the same thing here, SX0. I'll take the points that are here, and I'll do it like that all along my geometry. So once we've done that, we can come here and reactivate the subdivision at this level. We can go to side view here on X, and we can change the dimensions a little bit. So here, I'm going to go back to point mode. I'm going to activate the transparency here. And here, I can make an SC to be able to decrease the height a little bit. Same here, SC. And here, I'm going to increase a little bit. Like this. And I'm going to do the same here, SC. So I can increase the thickness a little bit. So here, I'm going to turn off the subdivision temporarily and go back to solid view. So here we can add loop cuts. So I'm going to do Control R and I'm going to add five here. I'm going to select this one. So with Shift Alt, left click to select here. And same thing, Shift Alt, left click. I'm going to go to side view here. I'm going to do a GZ this time and I'm going to come down a little bit to this level. And this time, I'm going to go back to transparency view here. I'm going to select this one, this one, and this one. So this selects the whole magnifying glass because we're in transparency view. I'm going to turn off the magnet, and then I'm going to do a GZ, and I'm going to bring them up a little bit like this. And so, if I go back to solid view, we get this. And if I turn on the subdivision, we get this. So here we have the end of our bar, and now we can continue the thickness of the bar at this level. So here, I'm going to select my entire magnifying glass. Alt left click to select all the loop cut here. Put me back in side view with X. And here, I'm going to do an EY to be able to extrude. And here, I'm going to be able to do an SC to be able to simply increase it, then do an EY again. I'm going to do an SC again to be able to increase it a little bit. And again, EY. And I'm going to do an SC again. So now we have our final thickness. Then I'm going to go back to the top view on Z here. And I'm going to select this one. So Alt left click. 
and this time I'm going to do SX. Same here. Just to be able to create a little bit of rounding. SX again. And the last one, SX so there you go. So we create a slight rounding like on the kinder Buono bars. And once we've done that, this time we'll be able to make an EY, which will be used to make the bar. So here I'm going to make EY, and I'm going to take it quite far. So about like this. So here, I didn't take a reference model, so I don't know exactly the distances, so we'll do it by eye. I'm going to do here. I'm going to put myself in top view here. With Z, I'm going to select this point and this point here. And I'm going to do Shift S. Cursor to select it. So here we put the cursor between the two points. And then I'm going to be able to go back to object mode. I'm going to go to object, set origin. Origin to 3D cursor. So here we have set the origin of our object at the level of the 3D cursor. So this time, we can put the cursor back at the center of the scene. So Shift S. Cursor to world origin. So here, the cursor goes back to the center of the scene. And this time, I will be able to move my object. So shift S, selection to cursor. So this time we will put our selection, our bar at the center of the scene. So at the cursor level. Once this is done, we can add a new modifier. And this time, we'll put the mirror modifier. We'll put it on the Y axis here. And we'll be able to put the clipping to merge the points. Okay, then once we've done that, We'll go back to edit mode. We'll add loop cuts here, just to have squares, if possible. So I'm not going to add too much either. I think like this should be fine. So here we have the main shape of our bar already. So once we've done that, we've done most of the work. So now we have to go back to object mode. With the tab key, I remind you. And here we'll be able to apply the mirror modifier. So for the moment, we still have the modifier. So we have a non-destructive modeling of the mirror. And now that we have a satisfactory result, we can apply the modifier, and it will apply our modeling, as if we had not added the mirror modifier. So here, to do this, I'm going to select my mesh. I'm going to go here, and I'm going to do apply, and the keyboard shortcut is command on the Mac, and I imagine it's control on the PC. So here, I'm going to click on this, and it's going to apply the modifier. So then, the last thing we have to do is unfold the UV, and add the material. So now I'm going to go into edit mode. I'm going to add a loop cut here. So I'm going to do Control R, and then I'm going to press Escape so that I can just move it to the center. Then, once we've done that, we're going to go to the UV panel here. We're going to go into Edge Mode here. So we have our edge selected, and I'm going to do my UV cut at this point. So there, I'll be able to right-click, so it must be selected. If it's not the case, you do Alt-Left-Click here to select the whole magnifying glass at this level, all around, and then we'll do right-click and mark seam to create a cut. Then we'll press it to select everything, and then we'll press U, and then unwrap. And then, we can see that our UV panels are unfolded. So they're not the best UVs in the world, but for the texture, we're going to leave them like that. So it's going to work very well. So then, what you can do, is to make here UV and export UV layout, to then design your texture on a software like Photoshop. I've already created my texture here. You can download it from the link in the description. So then you have to, if you want to create your own texture. You have to place the elements of your texture at the level of the two faces of our bar. Simply. So here, I'm going to go to the shading tab to add a material. So here I'm going to click on new. It will add my new material here. And then I'm going to come and get the texture that I created in Photoshop. So here, in my folder, I put my texture which is in PNG. So I'm going to drag it here. I'm going to put color on base color. So you can see that for the moment it doesn't work. I'm then going to do Control T. You have to have the Node Wrangler deal activated. So to activate it, you have to go to Edit and Preferences here. And you type Node Wrangler. And you just have to check it here to be able to activate it. Then, with the Control T shortcut, we can create our two nodes, the mapping and the texture coordinate. And it has to be linked, UV on vector, at the mapping level. And then, we can go back to the layout panel. We can put ourselves in Material Preview mode here. And there, our bar is simply inverted, so there's no problem for that. Just do an RY and 180. And so there, we have our texture which is applied to our bar. So there, if we look at it, we have the texture. And then we have to foresee. When you design your texture, at the level of the cuts, we have to foresee how it is going to behave. 
so that the cut is not seen here at the level of the texture. So I remind you, you have the possibility to download this texture and the source file too in the description. And so, the last thing you can do if you're interested in doing this. You can. Here we're going to deactivate the subdivision for the moment. We're going to activate the proportional editing here. We're going to go into edit mode, into point mode. And there what you can do is come and select, for example, points or groups of points. And there, do, for example, GZ, with the proportional editing activated. And there, you can make very slight deformations to avoid having a bar that is too perfect, for example, like this. There we have created a small deformation at this level. And what you can do is do exactly the same thing everywhere on the bar to create small imperfection. So, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to like, subscribe and share to support my work. I see you next time. Bye.